first of us to go to Broadway. It was a short run, but it was Broadway. And uh, it was very quickly after that that we began talking about a piece, and we didn't know what the piece would be. We came up with the title Einstein on the Beach. I thought of Einstein as a god of our time. We know stories about him, and we come to the theater sharing something together. And in a sense, uh, there was no need to tell a story because we already knew a story. How this man, who was a pacifist, also contributed to the splitting of the atom. Einstein was a milestone in that it brought him even wider acclaim and gave him a whole new audience and gave opera a whole new audience. I think it's the first time in the history of, of opera in which the opera music was composed around the stage sets. I think I've seen Einstein 40 times or something like that. It's one of the great theater works of the 20th century. If Bob had done nothing but that, and he's done so much more. When we first made Einstein, I went to the Metropolitan Opera and asked them if they would do it. I went to the National Endowment for the Arts and asked if they would support an opera, and they said, that sort of thing should not be in a conventional theater. You should do that in a loft downtown. So I thought, well, let's see. I think it should be right in our major opera house. And everyone was afraid that we wouldn't get an audience. There wouldn't be a public that would come for something like that. At the math, that it wouldn't be for their audience. And I tried everywhere to, to raise this money. I went to Paris, France, Einstein on the Beach. It was a commission by Michel Guy, who was the Minister of Culture at that time. The word had gone out that there was something unusual had taken place. Jane Herman uh, was in charge of special events at the Met. So Jane Herman came over to see the piece. She said, well, maybe as a special event we could bring it to the Met. But they wanted me Robert Wills and Birdhoffen Foundation to produce it on their day off. They would allow me to rent the house on a Sunday with triple time wages. I was bankrupt, I had no money. I said, let's go for it. Bob, they were both absolutely dying to see their work seen by American public. It's fine for them to have the European public, but for an American it's not enough. They want the American. They want them to recognize their work. I sold tickets from $2 to 2000 We sold out in two days. <laughs> and I put the $2 tickets next to the 2000 tickets. Thank you. 
This Court of Common Pleas is now in session. We all went as a family and we were all quite impressed. And uh, I had never been to the map before and we were sitting in like the director's box and we all felt very special and important. My father was a uh, heavy smoker, and Einstein was very long without an intermission. And my father sat there throughout the whole thing without getting up and taking a break, which was amazing. And then at the end of it, when people were standing and clapping and cheering, I just looked at him, and there was tears and such pride in his face that it was quite amazing. The fact that it was at the Met was a, really was downtown going very uptown. What was, uh, I think, shocking for, for many people was to see the ideas and the aesthetic and uh, the, these, I guess you could call them downtown elements that Bob was embodied in many ways, done with a professionalism that equal to anything else on Broadway or at, at the Met Opera. That was, it was, a, it was a way of saying we are equal. My father said, uh, wow, he said, this is very impressive. He said, you must be making a lot of money. And I said, no, Dad, I'm not. I said, you know, I produce this work. It cost a million dollars to produce it. I raised... Uh, $850,000. I'm $150,000 in debt. $150,000 in debt? I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, son, I didn't know you were smart enough to be able to lose $150,000. <laughs> That's probably the nicest thing he ever said to me. I said, Dad, it wasn't easy. It was a lot of work. <laughs> it was really hard. <laughs> we always think of fame and fortune as if they go together, but they don't really. The fame may come first, and the fortune may come, and it may not come. Eventually it can come, perhaps. It doesn't always come. But uh, Bob w w did something smarter than... He, he stayed in Europe. Bravo! The big success of Einstein was in Europe. There was no one in America that really wanted to work with Bob or me. Bravo! 